started. Alex82. Okay, let's see. That's the time for C4, I guess. Play C4. Okay, knight f6. Let's go with um, g3. c4, g3, and knight here. I'm just uh, ganging up on the light squares here. Kind of a simple plan in the opening, and then decide later what to do with the rest of the pieces. <coughs> This is a position where I could play um, e4 and go for the uh, Botvinnik setup, so why don't I try this? I should point out my rating got over 1,500. This, I think this is the first time it's happened while I've been on this channel. It means I'll probably lose. <laughs> whenever, whenever my rating gets up over 1,500, I get smacked down pretty hard usually. Uh, let's see, he castled. Um, are any of these pawns under attack? No. Let's go ahead and castle. I need to play um, d3 at some point so that this bishop has a way to develop. Might also need to castle. I don't know if the move order is so important here. Um, if you delay d3, maybe there are times when you want to play d4, like right here. Pawn to d4 in one move. He takes, I take with the knight. Got a kind of a king's Indian position. And I have um, maybe some pressure against his uh, his d pawn if he takes. He doesn't have to take, of course. He can just develop a piece. But his c pawn is in the way of his knight, so his knight has to go to uh, his knight would have to go to d7 if he wanted to develop it. Okay, so I have a little more center control, but it's an open center. He has a, a good dark squared bishop along this diagonal, and I have to be careful as I uh, <clears throat> move my pieces about. Yeah, so he's repositioning his uh, knight to uh, e5 there. It's a good square for the knight. And um, I could play f4 to try and prevent that. Can his knight hop into these squares? Not immediately. And uh, he's not immediately hitting. Well, he might trade off this knight. But it's not uh, under threat. Now let's try this. That just keeps his knight from going to this uh, good square on e5. It's not about opening lines or anything. And then I'll kick the knight back and maybe play bishop to... Uh, e3 there, defending the knight with the bishop as well as the queen. He can also kick my knight at any time with um, c6 to c5, forcing this knight to go away, opening up his bishop one more move, <laughs> one more square. Also this uh, d4 square, bishop d4 check would be very dangerous, so I have to make sure I try and keep control over that square. Yeah, queen d4 already. So now he is threatening to take here. He's putting pressure here. I need to defend. <clears throat> this knight. So how about knight e2? It's pinned, so I can't uh, I can't defend it very easily. <laughs> I can't move it. And uh, and I can't play bishop to uh, e3, so this looks like a good setup for black. I'm still going to kick his knight when I get the chance, and then maybe I'll be okay. Um, but if he has ways to put more pressure on me. But if he plays c5 now, I have knight b3, so he won't win the b pawn. It's not like that's hanging or falling at the end of that. And how else can he, uh, can he develop more pressure? See, his knight is not going to the natural c6 square. Because there's a pawn there. What else can he try? Rooks, bishops, yeah, bring his bishop out. Okay, I'm going to kick the knight first before I do anything else. And I don't think he has time to take the pawn. 
Maybe he does. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. He takes it anyway. I guess his idea is he's going to take here. So I'll take his knight, he'll take my knight, I'll take back, and then he'll take this knight with check. And I have bishop here to uh, meet the check, but I'll be down a pawn. I'll have queen here. Huh. So, um... Is there any other way of playing that? After bishop takes here, I, I think I have to take it, and I can't unfortunately take with a knight because it's still pinned. And the bishop is hitting my uh, my queen and my rook, so it's a fork. Okay, let's see. Other moves besides taking the knight. I can't move this guy. Uh, this guy is hard to... No, I have to get rid of that knight. <laughs> I'm just going to have to uh, suffer this. Suffer this position. So just bishop takes knight here, queen takes, and then queen takes here, check. Or bishop takes there, check. Looks pretty good. But with the knight on uh, <clears throat> g4, it was even more dangerous because the knight has these squares f2 and uh, e3 to hop into. So we can take here with either the queen check. or the bishop. So we went with the bishop. Um, okay, when he goes with the bishop, yeah, I can't block... I cannot block with my bishop. So that forces my king over here. I'm thinking I want it on h2 because maybe I can play bishop h3 to block h file checks. And now he doesn't get the pawn this time. So he did win one pawn, but he can't take another one. And I'm just gonna play rook to uh, Rook to b1, and then pawn to b3. He's ganging up on this pawn. Very logical. Because I need to uh, get my pieces in the game. And um, if he pushes, he can try and undermine this pawn. That is true. With either f5 or um, d5 be good moves to I think f5 would have been a good move there because if I push the pawn forward then he can just take it mm, pawn takes he's got yeah pressure he's got rook and bishop I think he wins a pawn there <clears throat> okay he didn't play that way he's got the knight getting into the game I'm going to uh, try and get my bishop in the game this way the dark squared bishop to uh, b2 here to contradict his bishop counteract his bishop he can plop his bishop into some of these squares supported by the queen. It could go to e3. Just have to make sure there's nothing nothing fatal going on on that e3 square. That would mean giving up the bishop pair if I play bishop b2, but on the other hand, uh, he's got um, maybe some dark squared weaknesses I could use. Maybe the queen. Bishop b2, bishop takes, queen takes. It's looking at this diagonal. I can't immediately play knight to f6 there. Yeah, maybe that's worth something. But in any case, this is a uh, strong bishop. i got to do something about it. That will force a trade. Hmm, his knight is... Maybe I have to take back with the rook. His knight is looking at the... Um, g4 square here that uh, I don't want him to win yet another pawn so bishop takes b2 rook takes b2 if he doesn't then I'm just going to I mean if he moves the bishop away <laughs> yeah let's see so queen takes let's check this out queen takes knight here check excuse me knight g4 check is yeah it just looks too dangerous King gets forced to the back row. Let's play like this then. Now at least I'm preparing to double rooks. Rook to um, d2, rook to d1. Put some pressure on this pawn. And now his knight is blocking the f-pawn. Let's see, can he take here? Knight takes, bishop takes, and then um, 
Rook takes. It's not possible for him to take there yet, is it? Okay, uh, let's um, add some more force to the deep pawn. Is that what I want to do, or do I want to put pressure on the... Uh, how about this move here? Queen, queen d3. I'm looking at his d pawn. I'm getting out of the way so I can support my e pawn with the rook. So there's no pin on the e pawn. Yeah, so he's piling up with the queen. Let's bring uh, this rook over here. Just to keep that pawn defended. I'm gonna double rooks on the um double rooks on the e file, it looks like. And he's supporting his d pawn. So let's go here. Get it all lined up. Oh, I left this hanging. I left my um after I talked about my g pawn, I left my g pawn hanging. You can just take that. That was dumb. Okay, so both of us were occupied by the central struggle, but you can't uh, can't neglect uh, what else is going on in the position. Okay, let's defend it with the bishop. Play my king to g2, where it's off the h file there and a little more secure on a light square. Let's take a look at that just a second. When did I first? So right here. Oh yeah, when I played queen d3. So that was a bad move. I could have played queen to f3. So queen d3. So he could have taken there. He could have taken there. He could have taken there. It was on the board for three moves. And then I finally defend it. Amazing. Okay, so what did he play? He played queen to um, b6. Looking at this diagonal. And um, I'm going to bring my king over. Didn't see any big threats there. I just got to keep his knight from getting too close here. And he's going to get that, get in that way. That's interesting. So is he planning to take back with the knight or the pawn? If he takes with the pawn, he took with the knight. So if I just put my rook here, how is he defending the knight? Or maybe I take the knight first and then play rook to h1. How is he defending? With his queen, I guess. But it did... Um, uh, it it uh, disrupted the pawns around his king a little bit. He can't defend this pawn with the rook or with his king, so only the queen can defend. So maybe there's some clever way I can chase his queen off of this rank. I, Queen can go there. Let's see, pawn here, pawn to b4, queen takes, rip takes here. Or maybe just queen here, threatening to coordinate on this. Uh, this queen is not threatening to penetrate here, so I, maybe he just really can't defend that pawn. And this open h-file is going to be going to be dangerous for his king safety. So, so he missed his chance in this game. He could have had me, I think. <laughs> that knight takes g4. Yep, I was just talking about the, the thinking process in chess in that uh, video I did about um, <clears throat> uh, decision decision making, chess mistakes of an A player number two. Um, that's a good example of that. Uh, don't doing not example of not doing that little tactical survey. What are what are your little checks and threats and captures, which you have time for even in a blitz game. You have time to quickly look around at the, the tactics. So that is with tempo. 
and then rook here check, queen here. Looks like I'm invading. Yep. Or queen here check. He blocks with the rook. He's got pressure on my um, check. He has pressure on my um, <clears throat> epon here, which is a bit uh, disconcerting. Have to be careful. Okay, that relieves some of the pressure. So queen here. He still has no checks against my king, and that's defended. So queen h4 takes. I take with check. I'm threatening just to take and win another pawn over here. His rook is loose over here. Speaking of <laughs> tactical surveys, but I don't don't see an immediate way to take advantage of it. His queen can come to the back rank here, I guess. So let's count the pawns. It's five pawns to five pawns. So uh, going into a, an end game here might just be drawn. Although I have these uh, advanced kingside pawns, it might still be worth something even in an end game. But I think um, I need to keep some pieces on. He's got a weak he still has his weak deep on. Might be worth something. Maybe I'll just win on time though, <laughs> if he takes too long <laughs> thinking about this. Yeah, he goes there. So I thought getting rid of one pair of rooks might be helpful. And then my queen here hits his rook, holds on to my material, but he plays rook to um, e1. I mean e8. Queen here, rook e8, maybe pawn to um, f5, hitting his queen. And then queen goes to somewhere. He doesn't have too many good squares for his queen. Let's try this. Queen h4, rook, I'm expecting rook e8, then pawn to f4, and queen somewhere. Let's see, can his queen take that pawn? I take the queen, he takes a pawn, rook with check. I mean, this pawn is kind of pinned here. But, uh, well, I get a queen for a rook, so that's got to be good for me. And then um, maybe I just step forward with the king, holding on to the pawn. I start marching this um, g pawn forward. Oh, also with the king out of the way, I can play rook to um, h2. Hmm, that looks looks interesting. He stops me. He stops the f pawn. I march. Rook f2. I mean rook h2. Uh, that keeps his queen tied down. Queen can't move away from the king except with check. And maybe I can march the g-pawn forward. Ah, he's got counterattacking ideas, yeah. Well, let's see, if I take, it does open up this file towards my king, but I don't want him to take. And his queen is not immediately getting into this file. His rook isn't either. Let's see. The pawn, he is uh, maybe thinking of bringing his rook to um, Okay, I'm going to try this idea <clears throat> with my rook to keep his rook from coming forward here. And then, um, well, this this did this got rid of a lot of the excitement in the position. <laughs> Black forfeits on time. Okay, so it's just a time position. This is probably a draw here. This is probably an even position. Anyway, I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.